Hey everybody, it's your Aunt Jess. I want to say sorry that I've been off for a while and it's just, nothing's wrong. I've just been going through some things lately that it's been a little stressful and it doesn't need to be, but my mind is making it that way. I don't have a lot to complain about. Obviously my life is fine. I just, I get a little overwhelmed sometimes and um, I just need to like take a break from social media. And I still been a little bit active on Twitter, X, whatever, but I just, I had to step back from the YouTube thing for a little bit. It's just, it was kind of getting to me and I didn't want to go to a bad place mentally. So um, I'm back. I, I did a uh, one hour interview with a friend of mine, Steve McRae. He's had me on his channel several times. We were going to talk about the planet fitness issue that just arose. And we did talk about that a little bit. We kind of got off topic onto some um, government things and conspiracy theories, but it, it's all relative and it's all you know, about the trans community and the things that the society is dealing with. So uh, I think it was, it was a good, it was a fun conversation. He wasn't feeling well. So we kept uh, just me on camera. I'm going to do some, some uh, pictures of some of the things that we're talking about. One of the things that I want to talk about with this planet fitness issue is that we all know what's going on if you don't, but we have this man who was caught and photographed in the women's restroom at planet fitness in Alaska of all places. And the lady that took the picture got her membership canceled for complaining about this. Now, everybody's boycotting or canceling their memberships, which is good. This is how we, quote unquote, bud light these people into submission. And, and I don't care. Like, if it means we get called bullies or, you know, we're being prejudiced against this company, so be it. If they're going to treat women like this, F that, you guys. We got to stand up against this woke, DEI, progressive government slash establishment that we're up against like we have to fight back and this is our way to do it Let's, we hit them in the checkbook we hit them in the pocketbook and make them feel it but just like bud light let's watch this video real quick because this i think is important to me so uh, i just left canceled my membership i went in the lady who helped me out she was new she was in training she got to the point where she asked the reason why i was canceling and i informed her about the alaska situation and the point of fitness non-discrimination policy and how they sided with the man in the bathroom and they canceled revoked the ladies membership in alaska and she's like i never heard of that and i, I can believe it because she's she's new to plan fitness uh but what got me was when it got to the point where she had to put in the reason for the cancellation she asked the manager what she should put in there and she told him what i had said he said well we can't put that and they put a different reason in there to justify my cancellation. So not only is Planet Fitness siding with the trans non-discrimination thing, but now they're covering it up instead of admitting what they did was wrong, they hid the reason why I canceled my membership. Doesn't matter. I'm no longer a member. They're no longer going to get another penny of my money, and I hope every one of you do the same thing. We got to protect our women. We got to stop letting the 1% take over. Yes, take that's a stand. Cool. It's time. Honestly, I'm not trying to take anything over. I'm protecting women. Everybody who knows me knows that that's my goal. So props to that guy for speaking up and props to anybody. If, if you know anybody who has a Planet Fitness membership, please cancel, 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 cancel. I talked about this a little bit in the video later that I don't want a bunch of people unemployed because Planet Fitness went out of business. But if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. I, so many people that are working from home or doing Toro or, you know, Airbnb, like these days, like nobody wants to work a real job anymore. And we're going to get what's coming to us if we keep this trend up. There are companies right now actively seeking to replace humans with automation and they're working really hard and they're getting far with it. Like I'm telling you, like the autonomous, my job is at risk right now. As an Uber driver in Las Vegas, we have robo taxis everywhere and a Uber or a Lyft customer can select. I want an autonomously driven vehicle. You can pick that now on the app. Like it's crazy. Like most people, even say mid thirties, maybe older millennials will have told me they would never get in a robot driven car. Like they, they don't trust it. And people want, but the younger generation, Gen Z, Gen Alpha, they'll 100% trust it because they were born with an iPad in their hand and AI is their best friend. So that's coming and we have to watch out for that as well. So, you know, am I worried about people getting laid off? Yes, that sucks. But I would hope that once Planet Fitness sees a huge drop in money, not just what they've seen so far, so far it's like $400 million, 
but that's only um steve explains that later in the video it's not like actual money out the window that's just a perceived revenue value that the company has because of their stocks and shares and memberships and stuff like that so um we'll see what happens let's watch this video uh, i'll put some pictures up on screen during the video so we can kind of talk about it it's this guy and he's been seen two different times in the same planet fitness by two different people and this dude is disgusting i just i'm sorry i know we'll get to the video but i want to talk about this i didn't get to talk about a few of these things with with steve i 100 percent believe this man has autogynophilia or he is an autogynophile agp or he's just a crossdresser in my opinion who gets turned on by being around women and wearing women's pantyhose and stuff like that you guys it's so annoying like you know what I'm wearing sweats right now, sweatpants. Like, there's nothing sexy about what I wear every day to work. Like, that's not transgenderism. And I get so tired of fighting that stigmatism. Yes, I have dressed sexy. Yes, I can dress sexy. Do I have sexy clothes? You bet. I got a whole closet full of them. But I don't wear them in public. I might wear them for a photo shoot. I might do something like, there is zero sexual arousal. It's more of a pain in the neck putting on lingerie or even nylons or i wear leggings and a hoodie every day like every now and then i'll wear some capri pants like, there's nothing sexy about trans like that's not what transgender is and these people don't understand it and that's my big fear is that the general population they don't know the difference between a drag queen a crossdresser a person who has agp or a, a transsexual like they literally don't know to them it's all the same and it's not their job to figure that out as a transsexual person, I can tell you, I don't want anybody dealing with this dilemma of, is that a drag queen? Is that a crossdresser? Is that a real transsexual? People shouldn't have to make that decision for themselves. Like they should be able to look at a person and that person should be respectful and move on with life. Like there's no reason for those two people to interact if they just don't need to. And I think that's kind of lost in today's society. Just being in someone's presence is is offensive or a microaggression or needs a trigger warning. Like what is going on with society today? So we talk a little bit about that, a little bit about government um, control, maybe totalitarianism, you know, stuff like that. So um, hope you enjoy it. And if you can like, comment, subscribe, I'd like to hear any input you guys have about the, either the planet fitness thing or the DEI or woke or progressive or left or conservative. If you have a problem with me, let me know. Let's, let's talk it out. I welcome anybody on my channel. I'm always welcome for a debate, especially with someone who doesn't agree with me. Um, I'd love to have that conversation. The warning at the beginning of this, like I always put in a warning on these type of topics. If these types of videos are not for you, don't watch them. Simple as that. Um, I mean, I, I, it's so funny too, Jessica. I, I was telling you before, I literally had people come into my comment section saying, you know, when I, I refer to you obviously as she, because you're transgender. And they've said, they kept on trying to change it to, oh, so you know me, you mean he? I'm like, I just blocked them. And I'm like, I'm not even, I'm not even dealing with this. I'm, I'm so disgusted by by people not being able to understand people that are actually transgender that have dysphoria then people like we're gonna be talking about this planet fitness situation because i think they're completely and utterly different um and that's why i respect you and that's why i'm friends with you because you are who you are and i, I absolutely adore you for that i do thank you thank you so 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 before we get started uh people they want to like get reminded of who you are um want to like give a quick bio there um, I am Jessica Gill. Go by Aunt Jessica on YouTube uh, because everybody says I look like their aunt. And I literally do look like a million ants that are running around the world. So um, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I uh, transitioned about nine years ago. I've been on drugs. I've had multiple surgeries and, um, you know, I'm living what I consider to be my best part of my life is because I'm happy now. I'm not an angry person, um, but you know, the transition, I'm not going to use those words like saved my life, but it did change my life to be more positive and as a positive influence in, in life. And um, my main advocacy is for um, protecting women's sports and women's spaces, uh, prisons, bathrooms, stuff like that. And um, that's that's what I go for the most is just to tr try and protect the women. Um, I try not to make it about myself because I do get that. A lot of people are like, why don't, you know, or a lot of people will say, you know, Jessica, this is, makes you look bad. You know, every time there's this, this issue that we're about to speak on, um, it, it does make me look bad, but I think I'm past that point in my life where I, I, I don't want to say like, I don't give a sh, but you know, I, I don't care what, what people perceive me as or how they see me. I mean, deep down inside. Yeah. It, it bothers me. I'm not going to lie, but I can't change the way people perceive me, you know, like in the Andrew debate that I had, 
Yeah, you're um, never going to convince him. Of anything. Yeah, it's, it's just not going to happen, right? And I, I agreed with him on on the things he said about you know my lifestyle, and but I disagree with him saying that me simply existing means that I'm advocating for being trans when everyone who knows me close and personal will. And I said this on the podcast, I am the last person you want to send your kids to or anybody wants to come to me and say, how should I transition or what steps do I want to take? And what's the life? And I am not that person. I'm not that one. Like, I will talk you out of it as fast as possible. So, yeah, it, you um, know, and it's funny you say that because it is it is remarkable that people think just because you're a certain position that you're all of a sudden um, an advocate for everything. Like, for example, you know, people think that I'm promoting agnosticism everywhere. I'm not just because I'm the unholy pope of agnosticism. People think that I'm literally out there hey go agnosticism not happening just because you're transgender doesn't mean that you have a fight to convince everybody else that they're transgender or you have any advocacy in it other than your position because you were a professional athletic person you were i mean you were professional not you're not some amateur oh. you were a big name in, in the sport uh people knew who you were and so you have invested interest in that <laughs> yeah yeah look at that yeah. yeah there you right go there. yeah all those no, yes um... I mean, she is legit when it comes to this bmx motocross i mean full-on knew what she was doing and so you have a vested interest in that. And so I think that's important to have that voice in there because it's, it's somebody who speaks from experience, not just as somebody who's transgender, but somebody who's involved in sports as well. Or exactly. physical fitness, as the case we're talking about with Planet Fitness. So so with this Planet Fitness, um, let, let's give a quick, let me give a quick two minute rundown of that. And then you kind of like tell me what you think of it because this has happened before with, with uh, Planet Fitness. This is not the, the first time this happened. People know that Planet Fitness has a very inclusive policy. Um, you are what you believe you are. Anybody can use anybody's restroom or things of that nature. Why they don't have three restrooms, I don't understand. Most people have figured out, hey, look, we could have men, women, and then, you know, things for um, family, like a family area or, or transgender or just, you know, anything, a communal. Because in other countries, they're all, most bathrooms are communal anyways. You literally go to the bathroom next to a female. Nobody freaking cares. Right. It's not even an issue in some countries. This is the only country that seems to give a crap about that. But I do understand with children. Right. That I do understand. And so that uh, that I didn't know about the other countries. But yeah. I'm, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not. It, there are so many communal things in, in, in other countries. There's not even an issue. But this was a situation where, where this person who was in the bathroom um, identified as LGB, but not as trans. Um, it was just a, literally a full on man shaving in the Planet Fitness restroom, in the, in the women's restroom with a 12 year old in a towel not far from them. This is why I think it took flight. Um, this and so so somebody had her name is Patricia. She took a picture of this of this of this guy. Again, not trans. He never claimed to be trans. I've never seen anywhere he claims to be trans. Just gay or LGB. Because um, he has his own words. He was LGB, which is lesbian, gay, or bi. Not trans. Not QT. Uh, mm -hmm. And she got banned. She got banned from Planet Fitness. She lost her membership. And so there's been a huge push to cancel Planet Fitness's um, memberships. There has already been a a uh, $400 million loss of stock evaluation with them. Yeah, 400 million, yes. that's huge. <clears throat> uh, that's Bud Light. <laughs> Bud Light was 1.4, I think it's come out to be, 1.4 billion. 1.4 yeah. billion, I think, was the last thing I saw. Stock, <clears throat> yeah, that's, and and they're still recovering. Now, they, they I think, it up through other beers, but. Yeah, but, I think that the, the main, the reason for the whole uproar, actually, honestly, was because of the, um, the lady's name, I forgot. Mitchell Shrek. Patricia getting her membership revoked, like I think that that sparked it because I had seen this picture. This this isn't new. Like this picture um, was circulating. I swear, almost six to eight months ago. And I mean, I could be wrong, but no, no, that was nobody seemed to care. One. One, well, there is an issue back in September twenty first of twenty twenty three. There was a fifteen year old boy caught exposing himself to a woman or a, a younger girl in a Planet Fitness. Locker room. I think I remember like, that. Mm -hmm. and that guy got arrested, you know. So um, that was just a kid, like a you know, a regular teenager wearing a beanie, looking all you know, gangster. And I just was like, okay, like doesn't look trans at all. And I, I don't mean to stereotype his looks, I'm just saying he didn't look like he was putting any effort to be trans. So um, and that's where I think the liberal media might have pushed this original story down because um Patricia didn't get canceled or kid didn't have her membership revoked quite yet. Maybe that's the timeline I'm off on, but I'm yeah, either sure. way. I think I think she got I think she got her membership um revoked quite quite rapidly, actually, quite immediately. After um, that thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know the exact date this happened. I know what happened in mm -hmm. Alaska. Yeah. Um <laughs> of, of, all uh, of all places, right? Um, yeah, of all places. <laughs> you think Florida, right? Um yeah, everything right. happens, everything happens in Florida. <laughs> Um, yeah, a Florida man, totally. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right. There was a there was a fifteen year old. Um, well, th this one. Let's see. Th th this okay. There was a there was an oh, and this is in Georgia of uh, this happening as well, mm -hmm. to exposing himself to a fifteen year old girl. Yeah. And so, yeah. so let me ask you. Um, 
there are going to be people that take advantage of these ultra uh, liberal and inclusive types of situations. Um, and unfortunately, it harms the people that just want to go pee, right? They just want to be left alone. Yeah. They're, this is why I've made such a distinction between the people that are actually transgender and then people that are actually going out of the way to use these types of situations for their own weird proclivities. And they do exist. They're, clearly, they do exist. And, yes. and this guy, who is a guy who says he was, I guess, like I said, gay, not even trans, He's he was completely using that for his own whatever reasons to, to use the bathroom there. Um, and I can understand why you would not want somebody like that um, in, a, in you know around a 12-year-old child. And again, my whole thing has always been about the kids, right? How does it affect the kids? Um, yeah. If somebody who was just trans um, and there was you know a, a female going, I don't think most people really care. Those are not the people that that are causing harm. These are not the people that are exposing themselves, right? And I think it really harms the trans community when they don't differentiate between um, the, the autogonophilias or auto, autogonophiliacs and the um, the, the pedos, I guess. I mean, I don't know what else to call them. The people that just yeah, you know, yeah. The, the so but, to to touch on to start with what you said, like why is this person in there now? He's not claiming trans, but he's claiming to be a member of the community now. I that doesn't sit well with me at all. Either either way, whether he's trans or not, it's for me. It's about are you aware how other perceive people perceive you because if you're not you need to be and the fact that this man that patricia took the picture of he is aware of how people perceive him he just oh, wants absolutely. to be there because he absolutely. probably is i think he's just a pervert and i okay, think he's getting i agree with, i agree with you on that i think there's something I, clearly wrong there i i would say he's probably just doing this for um spank bank material if i'm allowed to say <laughs> um but yeah well, he's but I, just do, get that if he's, if he's gay if he's if he i mean if it, assuming that he's, he's gay why, he's not. why would he want to use... Oh, you don't think he is? No, we, why would he be in the women's room? If he was gay, he'd be in the oh, men's room checking out the boys. His, his, okay. words, so, his, his words said, his words were he was LGB. Not not gay, but LGB. So I don't, hmm. again, I I could be, again, cross-dresser or something. I, I don't know if they're... Okay. Uh, I I've, something, somebody, off there, though. Okay, so I've been involved in the community almost all my life. Like, whether I only transitioned nine years ago, I've still, I was in the community as a teenager. So I know what I'm looking at. I, I don't have the greatest gaydar when it, when it comes to, when it comes to women, I have a terrible gaydar. When it comes to men, I'm, I'm pretty good with the, the gaydar too. But, um, so this man, if he was gay, he would be, you know, scoping out boys in, in, in the men's room. And he's not trans. Obviously I know that, uh, he could be an autogynophile because of the second picture that was released of him where he's wearing nylons, pantyhose, I think in a skirt. skirt. Yeah. So no. that's what we call a crossdresser, um, or I call them weekend warriors. Um, uh, there's, uh, unfortunately, I live in Vegas. Um, there's a million of those here, and a lot of people travel here because it's a way to escape their family life, and they can dress how they want. They can dress up like a girl and do their fetish thing for the weekend, and then and go home back to their them. wife and kids. I, I, well, they're doing that. It's if somebody cross, if somebody's a crossdresser and they want to fly their freak flag in Vegas or whatever, I have, <laughs> nobody should give a crap. I look, I'm all for uh, rights. I am for all for adults okay. doing what the hell you want. I couldn't care what okay, person but wears. I really don't. Let me let me stop you on that part right there. Okay, okay. I know I said I, I, shoot me down I, here. Come on, what are you, you going to no, say? No, just listen. So I know I said right. I, I try when when I'm fighting for women's privacy spaces and sports, I try not to make it about me, but I am going to make this about me. And yes, this is me gatekeeping a little bit, but I don't want these autogynophilia is coming to my state just to cross dress for the weekend they they wear this uh, exuberant makeup they look like a drag yeah, queen I, I, it looks and it looks it pretty, looks pretty terrible pretty. and yeah. they act they act a fool i've got a community of actual trans girls here that have called several of these people out for going to bars that we might go to go to a, a public establishment and act like an idiot um, dressed in I drag. Can, I can see and, that. You, you have a, you have a so point. They, they make you look bad. I don't. I don't bad. want them coming to Vegas and flying their free yeah. flag. Like, do that sh in your own hometown. Like, if no, you're afraid to get caught them, right? by your wife, that's your problem. You deal with it. I, I mean, sacrificed but, okay, everything well, I, in my life to be who I am, and I'm not going to change. You know, for well, this is a great. This is a great point. Though, because you make a you make a very valid point. Okay, you really really do. And you have to you have to balance people's individual freedoms against how they affect other people. And I think would you would you agree if they maybe were just cross dressing but they weren't acting the fool it wouldn't be as bad because but but they're going to places acting the fool which makes the entire community look bad. Yeah, I mean I'm because drag has been around forever. People just went to drag. It, people just dressed in drag. Why would anybody care? Yeah, it, it it's fine if they want to you know go to a nightclub and and they're, they're dressed like a drag queen. That's that's good. But like 
I, I've had na- all my neighbors know who I am. They know me. They see me going to work every day. And hi, Jess, you know, this and that. And my roommate might have some friends over that are cross-dressing and they're dressed like total prostitutes leaving my house. And it's my neighbors come on like, what the fuck was that? And I'm like, I, yeah. you know, they're wearing these mini skirts and these heels. And it's just, you know, I, there's a time and place for everything. And, you know, me I, going I to work that. on a Sunday night, that's not, that's not where well, I, did, I, did, did, did you ever still see this executive in the UK? I, I think he's a barrister or, or lawyer. I did or something, see that. He, yeah. Yeah. We dress it. He dresses from the top up in a business suit, but skirt the way down, waist down. And it's, it's kind of hard to take somebody like that seriously. I get that, you know? Um, yeah. But so, I mean, I, 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 again, I totally get what you're coming from. I really, really do. Um, it's just, I, I'm so much into freedoms that I think people should be able to dress any way they want. But I, I think know. And I got a little it's angry. No, you you're right. Face face. What I'm talking about. I was like, oh, I don't want Jessica, them here. To... That's because they're, they're making they're making the trans community look out to be look like fools. And and this is what's yes. frustrating because I've always supported gay rights. I've always supported um, uh, the actual trans people that are, have uh, legitimate gender dysphoria, not the anogatophiliacs, not the the pedos, not not those. The actual people that are trans, I 100 percent feel for them. I I can imagine. I can't imagine what it'd be like to to, to have their their that dys- dysphoria. And so I support that because it's, it's a medical condition, right? Sure. But 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 the other ones, the, the dishonest agents, like this person in, that was in the restroom for Planet Fitness, that's not an honest agent. Um, the people like, you know, the Riley Gaines has, has fought against, like uh, uh, Leanne Thompson, Th- uh, Thompson, and, uh, you know, all them. Those are not to me honest agents because they are literally abusing the system in order to take advantage of situations to promote their own self. They're not giving a damn about anybody else. They're not giving, caring about women. They're not caring about children. They only seem to be interested in themselves. And I can understand why why that could you know look bad for the whole community but I, i'm glad to see that more trans people are standing up and saying enough stop this you yeah, know exactly. it's not just you and blair white anymore yeah we have um, a small army of uh well there's the blair white army those are just people who follow her and support her but we have a small army with me for sarah higdon um country space there's the, um uh, there's a few others but yeah and we're all on the right and you know unfortunately in twitter we're kind of echo chambering ourselves on on x or twitter and i just I need to reach the other side and I can't. And that's, you know, unfortunately, so yes, what is the other side? The liberal media side, the one that the left, the the progressives, I guess I would say, or the the queer community. But you've got channels out there that do that. I mean, Blair has a huge audience. Riley has a huge audience and you know, both of them. But they're both, um, the only people they're contacting are the people on the right, you know, the echo chamber that I speak of. And I just, I wish I could get my voice heard in other circles other than my own, you know? So, but I'm, you know, that's, I, I will admit, I was slacking on my own YouTube channel lately. So um, I'm glad you invited me on tonight. It feels good to get back on camera. It's been a while. So I, I enjoy um, having you on. I, and this, this oh, is so thanks. funny because again, um, you know, recently I had somebody who I, I don't know very well. Um, you know, they, they're, they're trying to say I was transphobic. <laughs> and I told you about this. It's like, I like serious. I was like serious. And this is what I'm saying. Um, they, the people can't differentiate between honest people that are just wanting to talk about the topics and, and the differentiate between people that are transgender and the dishonest actors. And then who needs them? All they're doing is just throwing out the pejoratives out there. Oh, you're a bigot. You're trans. You got labeled a turf. You. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Uh, how um, radical do you have to be to label a transgender person a turf? Yeah, just because they, they stand me, up for, for women's rights in, in athletics. Yeah, they call me a big A, a turf. And, uh, you know, to a point, I, I am about trans exclusion because that's what it stands for, trans exclusionary. Um, I, I can leave out the radical feminist part. That's not really really me. I'm not a feminist, obviously. I, I think a feminist needs to be a female, in my opinion. I, I, I agree. I agree with you on that. that. Yeah. I, I get tired of seeing males that identify as a feminist. I'm like, you're just trying to I think it's kind of weird, bit. too. Yeah, get in their pants, maybe, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's so called, it's called beta. I just I, I am a trans exclusionary, um, minus the radical femme, but you know, whatever radical femmes don't like me either, so but yeah, so when it comes you to mentioned that with the femme, okay, let's go ahead, sorry, yeah, no, I'm sorry, right. when it comes to prisons and you know, rape shelters, um, and oh, yeah. sports, you're dang right, I'm gonna exclude trans people, they don't need to be there, there's no reason for them to be there. This bathroom issue with Planet Fitness, he doesn't need to shave in the women's room he right. wants to shave right, exactly. in the women's room because it's what satisfies his sexual fetishes like i'm telling you this man is going home and doing and things right. that he you might be right he remembers right. what he saw it's disgusting you 100 um, might be right and i agree with and, you on the prisons i mean for, for for them to put a biological male into a female's prison is mind-blowing just absolutely mind yeah. that that has we, the, we have reached a society where they think that is acceptable when women are getting impregnated in prison when they're supposed to be safe. 
Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. They're getting knocked up too. Some of them, uh, the 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 trans supposedly trans inmate, which is not trans at all, has impregnated two different women. Um, yeah, and that's happened several different times with different inmates. But and yeah, I got I've got say multiple trans, women pregnant. What would happen if if what would happen if all the the the, the, the <laughs> men in prison said, "Oh, we're all trans now"? What happens then? I'm surprised they haven't. Like, why? I'm surprised they, they haven't either. Why? They uh, right? they get they get um. Well, some of them, you do. You are administered transgender medicine, so some of them probably don't want to take that. But um, oh, you have to you have to take hormone therapy if you if you if you go to female. Yeah, they 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 prescribe you, and that that's the other part that I have another um, woman here in a female, uh, Chelsea Freedom. She is on the Nevada Board of Legislation. Um, we were fighting, and our governor that we recently voted in, uh, who is Republican. Um, passed a bill that would allow Medicaid and Medicare to pay for this transgender medicine for inmates. And we were like, are you kidding me? Like my tax dollars do not need to go towards some wannabe criminal who wants to be trans. Like that's not right. fair. Like, it's, I'm it's, not it's, paying it's, for that. I am absolutely so me, not paying for that. So let me ask you, how, do, how does the system differentiate between the honest and the dishonest agents? There is no such thing right now. There's, um, and, and that's, I'm, I'm glad you asked that because what I wanted to touch on too is the general population is getting their first impression of trans people from like mainstream media, like liberal media, because yeah, I agree. And it's painted that we are the victims, that I'm oppressed, I'm the minority group that's you know super oppressed. It's it's cool to be trans, and if you are trans, you're being eradicated, you're being erased, you're being genocided. You know, I'm, I'm just it's so frustrating that people who don't know the ins and outs and the nuances of, of the transgender community, whether someone is a drag queen or somebody's just doing it for fun or somebody lives this full time. Now, there's there are a lot of trans girls that are younger than me and they pull it off, you know, they don't stick out like a sore thumb like, like, like me. Um, you know, I'm a dying breed as far as kind of turning into a dinosaur out there in the trans community. And, and, you and I get- You transition so much later on in life too. Yeah, and and believe it or not, like not only do you know the trans conservatives and the trans liberals, they will um, shame me or get down on me because I did transition late. Like I've literally been told that I should have never transitioned, like that I made a mistake when I transitioned um, so late in life. Why, and why is that? Why why is that for them to decide? It's not, but they they're young and they have youth on their side, so they pass. You know, a lot of them look just like a female. Most women wouldn't even be able to look at them and tell. And you sure. know, I I applaud them and I'm jealous, but um, it doesn't change. You know how I go about my daily life. I'm not going to change myself for nobody. Well, you have to live and... your life. You have you have to be happy in in how you go about your your life. You have no you know. I, I again, I'm not against people pursuing their happiness. This is where like me and like Andrew Wilson would completely disagree, right? Because Andrew is just against you know, he's just <laughs> I hate to yeah. use the word bigot, but yeah, he is. I mean, I don't know what else was. I, he probably wouldn't be. He probably wouldn't even think that would be a pejorative to him, you know, because he is against. He doesn't even think. He thinks being gay is like something evil to God or something like that, and that's just like so mind blowing to me, because you know, if there's if there's an actual God, uh, I don't think he gives a crap about somebody being gay or not, because that's just <laughs> biology. You know? Yeah, and I agree with you. But then here we go. If we go down that road, these these progressives are, are now saying, you know, I just got this one thrown at me the other day. You know, trans people have been around for centuries and years before. That's not the, true. That's not true. I'm like, whatever. You know, like I I miss what, the, what I it miss is. Back. Is a lot of gay people they being told they're trans and and convincing them at a very young age. <laughs> I look right back and I I miss the 80s when it was gender bending. Like I miss yeah. David mm -hmm. Bowie. Annie Lennox, oh, yeah. like like yep. Annie Lennox. She was a girl that looked like a dude sometimes. Like I loved her. And uh David Bowie, he was my hero. Like he he looked hotter than most yeah, women. They were gender like, betters, but they weren't they weren't um Iggy Prince, Poppy. all of them. Yeah, Prince, and yeah. Just, but you know, imagine they nowadays though 100 yeah, percent feminine. Yeah. Right. But imagine Liberace. Imagine nowadays they're all being told they're trans mm, and yeah. all the medical yeah. stuff being done to them rather than just let them live their lives. Yeah, you it's know. scary. Like that's a, well, I'm hopefully um, we'll we'll get things changed around in the uh, upcoming year. So, I, do you think so? I mean, like, do you think they're getting the message? Like Planet Fitness, even though they've lost a lot, they're doubling and tripling down. They're losing memberships left and right. Bud Light is still recuperating, even though they're getting some money from other beers that they sell. I know that Stella um, makes a lot of money for them and a few other flagship beers. But I mean, to lose 1.4 billion has got to hurt. 
Um, yeah, but they don't they don't seem to care. I know that the, the VP you said was, was Planet was Fitness terminated. has lost four billion already. Four, no, no, or... four hundred million. Four hundred million. So they're not in the billions yet. Not yet, but I mean, these these are big companies, I, I right? But it's, it's, it still hurts. But the fact is that they're they're catering for a very small minority and not listening to the people that are their main constituents. And and so, you know, Planet Fitness might go one hundred percent. Well, they already are one hundred percent. You know, liberal and woke. Um, and then people just need to decide: is this a is this a place I want to go? If I have a twelve year old daughter, do I want to bring my daughter to this facility? You know, and I, as a parent, I would never bring my daughter to that kind of facility. Hell no. Right. Yeah, no. Um, and I said this with Bud Light too, and I, I feel bad if this does happen to Planet Ho Planet Fitness. I, I, I hope it does because these people need to learn, and then other businesses can learn from them for failing. But if everybody, almost everybody, cancels their membership, and I start seeing Planet Fitness is going out of business, I'm gonna be like, yes, that this won't is happen. What, yeah, these are, I, these are two. But I said companies. this with Bud Light. Like, do you know how many Americans are now gonna be unemployed because of this? So. It sucks. This, it's this suck. ripple yeah. effect that these trans activists are creating. They don't realize they're costing people jobs. Like Dylan Mulvaney. They don't care. Oh, I said his name. They don't care. I hate saying that guy's name. <laughs> I know. Um, I usually I know. just say DM. So he costs, you know, if Bud Light had to start laying people off, he would have cost a million people their jobs. And I'm not okay with that, you know. And that's what I happens when you're there, a narcissist. They don't care. Mulvaney doesn't care. Mulvaney's no, about he Mulvaney. But but my identity doesn't need to be the cause of the root of all evil, you know, and that's how people see me, you know, and again, not to make it about me, but eventually I'm, I'm, you know, every day I'm in the grocery store or whatever. And I don't like want people looking at me going, Oh, that's one of those people that, you know, supports Nike and, um, you know, planet fitness, or they probably work out at planet fitness. So you're, you know, you said this earlier, it is, these bad faith actors like this guy in the bathroom shaving makes me look like an asshole. Like literally, you know, people start to conflate him with me and I, yeah. what am I, you yeah. know, so I and, hope planet fitness goes out of business. Like they, yeah, they, they need a they, lesson, they, but the problem is, is this, okay. So the money they've lost is just a market evaluation. And that's just how the, 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 the brand is, is evaluated, right? They look at different things like um, the size of the company, cash on hand, uh, customer trends. They look at the, um, they look at a lot of factors and they say, okay, based upon these evaluations, what is this company worth? And the evaluation took a $400 million dive. The, the Bud Light took $1.4 billion, which is a huge amount of evaluation. Any company yeah. for $1.4 billion. That, so that just means that they're, they're value, evaluated much less. Um, and as you said, they're putting you know, other people out of, out, of, out of work because they're shutting down some of the factories, but they're reopening, I guess, um, for other types of beers. Because again, Anheuser-Busch is a big company. They have a lot of um, beers they produce, well, right? And they just struck a deal with the UFC. Um, Elon Musk is talking back with Bud Light and and has actually put some feelers out there saying, hey, should we give Bud Light a second chance? There's another big company too. UFC, Elon Musk, and, and somebody else was like, you know what? Let's give Bud Light another chance. They've cut ties with John. I happen to like and... Bud Light. I, if, if I just want to like simple beer. I, I've been... I don't do boycotts very much, but I did. I, I, I just don't drink beer that much. I don't drink at all. Uh, barely. I, bo I boycott. There's this whole trans movement thing um, has cost me one, two, three, three companies that I used to support: Doritos, Hershey's, and Nike. I do not buy any more of those products anymore. Those three products because Hershey's. And I supported, respect that. I totally respect that. Yeah. Yeah, the, the they, Hershey's of support? Canada. Yeah, they did. They put a girl, a trans girl, in charge of their. Um, women's division and said this is the new face of women uh her she and they made the, the candy bar that says her and then she like I pronouns that. yeah yeah I so that, I, yeah. I quit buying hershey's products and i used to love kit kats and hershey stuff and so now doritos is sponsoring a um pedophile literally like i think um a person who was convicted of um pedophilia and over it is over in brazil or some other country. why though what, what benefits do they have i mean again why are they catering to the, to the i mean the the community the trans community is like less than what 0.01 percent it's a very very small percentage it's what growing the, but the, it's growing yeah but fine but what is the advantage unless the only thing i can think of is they have people in very high power you know that are making these decisions um, well, part of part of me thinks that, and that's cutting off, but like what Andrew right. Wilson said has to do with this a little bit. So if I want to put my aluminum hat on and say that right. the the government and all these um, companies that are su supported by government funding, the DEI, and eventually they will dwindle the population down. And this is the road to that. This is it does, everybody's it, I, gay, I, everybody's know trans. 
there is going to be less people on the planet and elon's freaking out about it he's like we need more humans you guys need to stop being you know I will even go more conspiratorial relationships. than that. <laughs> and, I'll even go more conspiratorial than that. And I, again, right? sandbox this. This is just hypothetical. Okay, hypothetical. So make it very clear. I, I don't like you guys' hypothetical. I hate these. But go ahead. But but <laughs> but it does seem like they're trying to sterilize trans people to get them out of the population. Mm hmm. Hundred percent. They're they're going to eliminate. Is that, is that, this... So it's not not conspiratorial then. I, well, I mean, nobody's it come is, out but and I mean, said it. Like, but, oh, but, no, a lot of people come out and said it. I'm, a lot of people come out and said that. Well, like, like the World Health profile, Organization. But... Yeah, no, the world, the WHO and WPATH, they've all said, you know, we need less people on the planet and we need to start eating plastic bugs. And so yeah, they want less people. And this is mm -hmm. the low key, low key way of doing that. Like, get everybody trans, put everybody on hormones and puberty blockers, and then everybody sterile. Wow. And we don't have, Nobody I feel like, I feel like it's a kids. Joe Rogan type. This is like a Joe Rogan conspiracy type thing, right? It, Joe it Rogan, kinda, you know, it's a, yeah. It's a, in my opinion, that's a very long way around, um, you know, lessening the population of the world. Like that's that's a long that's the long game, right? So, I, I mean, a short game is too obvious. Where it's just you know the COVID thing didn't work, or it maybe eliminated some people, but it was that you know part of the process of elimination of you know too many people on the planet. Do you think there's a people in power that are making these huge decisions that are affecting people, you know, overall in real life like that? I don't. Yes, the, I do. But I'm, my mind struggles with why do they want less people to control? Like they want everybody controlled and sterile and afraid and oppressed and victims so that they can swoop in and say, we got you. You know, we're yeah, gonna protect good at you. That. They love. We're gonna that, protect right? you, and we got you right here. Yeah, yeah. Put some power. Absolutely. Keep some in power, and then the people yes. who trust them because they were rescued by the government because they were oppressed and they were victims. Right. And then the government said, "We'll protect you." These people are bad. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of that. But I'm trying to figure out, like, why do you want less people on the planet? Don't you know? Don't you want more tax dollars? Don't you want more votes? Don't you want? Well, you know, well, here, here you are. You got. Look at the people pushing it, though. It's the it's the radical Christian right wing who wants, you know, that don't want people to be gay or trans anyways. And if they can eliminate them all, they can make them all sterile. And just, you know, it's basically and I hate to use the word, you know, the G word, but it, it kind of is like they're just trying to eliminate all the all the transgender people and all the gay people by going, hey, you know what, we're going to we're going to say you're transgender and sterilize you and put you through all these medical procedures. Um, it, it, I hate to say it because it does sound conspiratorial, but I, I don't have any other explanation of why they're going out of their way. To, to harm these kids like this but you think there's no other it's, reason you think it's the the christians that are doing that because i would say it's the the yes because the, i don't i just well, i don't see how because it's, it's, it's the radical christian um right that's in power look at look at the people in the government there are some radical christians out there yeah but they're all you know democrats i thought but you know maybe i'm wrong no, I, no, I think it's mostly republicans uh, right. You know, it could be both. I mean, there's Democrats or Christian too. So, you know, I, I believe in horseshoe, horseshoe theory. I think the, the the right and the left are the same group anymore. I don't know. <laughs> they pretty much are. are. And, yeah. you know, so, so yeah, I don't like being confused with uh, a drag queen or a crossdresser or even a sex worker who gets, you know, plastered all over the news because this trans girl who is a sex worker gets murdered um, because she was doing sex work in in a bad neighborhood and you know things went south well that she's put herself in that position and i'll you know pronoun her correctly and she probably is trans we have a lot of trans sex workers here in vegas i know a hundred of them you know but um you know it's not the it's not right that the the media portrays them as me and we're all the same you know i'm not that sex worker that's found in this in the gutter you know because right. it's easy to compartmentalize that way. I think a lot of people just throw people in the same groups. Yeah, it's frustrating. So, and, and I keep so telling I people they're not the same group. Yeah, and I don't want this guy at Planet Fitness being identified as a trans person. And you know, so far, I think I, I read as much as I can, but it's all just like more about. I've seen let's nothing. Let's, I've, seen, yeah. I've seen nothing to, to say he's trans. Um, mm -mm. You know, um, he's not. They're, they're absolutely yeah. not. So, so what do you think is the solution? If you were Planet Fitness, what would you do? Um, what if, what would you do if you were in charge of Planet Fitness? Like, if we, and I, by the way, I this has been going on for a year, but light. I told people this was not going to go away anytime soon. I was right on that. I would, I said it was a horrible decision. I had people block me, and I even had blocked people that I I cared about because they kept saying I was transphobic for say, telling them the facts that Bud Light is going to have significant um, losses over this. 
if I was the Planet Fitness CEO, I would say maybe cost some money, but I think they could reconfigure some of their locker rooms to be third sex or um, gender. You know, they would have to give you a woman's. I, I want a woman's only, a men's only, and a unisex. Like, I don't see a problem with that. That's inclusivity to me. <sighs> Real quick, I don't have, I, this is my my belief, because I, I believe in freedoms, right? I believe in First Amendment. I believe in uh, freedom of expression. But I don't have to to have the same mindset as somebody else, right? Somebody who, you know, believes that they should be able to use the the, the, the whatever bathroom. I don't have to agree with that. If this guy thinks that he has the right to, to to use the female bathroom because he just says he's gay or whatever, he's like I said, I'm a trans. I don't have to agree yeah. with that. I, I don't have to, right? Mm -hmm. I, I can say, look, there's a problem here because you know there are people taking advantage of this. This allows a third bathroom where people any you know anybody go use where they don't have to worry about it. You know that that's your, your choice or single use bathrooms or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't do understand how this is. Yeah, what's I don't understand how this is not a fixable problem. Um, I know one gym I used to belong to, I can't remember the name, but they had single use stalls and single use, um, changing rooms, single use, everything. It, it takes up a lot of space and I get that, but they can it's do the, it either, they can do either gender neutral. They can label it as family. Um, they can yes. label it however they want, but that's, that right. needs to happen. Like, I don't care who you are and women need their own spaces. Now, my, my problem is that I do have trans trans women friends who do pass as female and I do not want them in the men's room. And, and that's where we run into that problem where I was talking about, like Blair talks about this a lot, self-perception and being self-aware of how you are perceived. That's so important. And Blair was kicked out of a, of a restaurant for using the men's room. She, she said, all right, you guys want to bitch at me and say, stop mm -hmm. using the women's room. Okay. I'll go in the men's. She went in the men's and Guy went in front desk complaints. So there's a girl in the Ben's bathroom. So what do we do with those trans girls who do pass one hundred percent? Blair's very passable. That's that is true. Um, yeah. here, and here's the thing: back in our day in the eighties, nobody cared. My, my, I mean, again, people were like, um, you know, women all the time would use the men's. If you remember back, you know, women would have long lines. <laughs> the lines, generally speaking. the lines, yeah, yeah, they and still, so, they still do. <laughs> yeah. When a woman, when I saw a woman use the men's bathroom because the line long, I, I don't, I don't give a shit. I, I don't care because again, nobody was taking advantage of these of these things until recently. It, I mean, very, mm -hmm. very, maybe, maybe very, very few. But those people got arrested for it, right? There was there was ramifications. Now there's yeah. no ramifications, and people are taking advantage of that. That um, uh, and that that I think is a problem. That's why I think where the system changes when people stop being held accountable for their their behaviors. Yes, it is. It has changed a lot, and a lot of people are saying that. Um, you know, you can't, or that they'll throw it at me. Like it's illegal uh, or people that are advocating for someone like me to use the women's room. They're like, well, it's illegal to, to commit that act of SA in a women's room anyway. So they're not going to do it. I'm like, it's not that it's, it's the people, the bad faith actors that are just doing the wig and the makeup just to get access, you know, and that's, that's who we're trying to prevent. I, I hate to make it about myself, but I'm the one who's going to get punished for it. Cause I'm, I am an honest person. Like everybody who's watching you my are, YouTube you videos, I, I, I respect they all say, really you know, I get so many comments on that Jubilee video still to this day. Like, oh, I just saw you on the Jubilee video and you're such a woman. Like you, you, you That's were welcome in the women's the room. Place, Every, <laughs> yeah. Everybody's Literally. like, you were so welcome in the women's room. Like you give off feminine energy and, um, you know, that's not always the case, but, um, you know, I, I mean, I try and be, I'm genuine. This is how I am in real life. Like I, I work in the hospitality industry in Las Vegas. We have 43 million people visit my city every year. All I do is work with people and I am nice. I am friendly, but I've walked in the women's room and seen that uh, it's uncomfortable. They're, I'm like, Ooh, I should leave. You know, this was not recently. Trust me. I would never do that now. But six years ago, I had, you know, my girlfriends, I, I said this on Jubilee thing, drag me into the women's room because I'm like, no, I'll just go over here. And they're like, no, girl, you belong with us. You're fine. I'm like, yeah, but that girl over there is staring at me like I'm a zombie. So I'm not making her comfortable. So that makes me uncomfortable. You have and a lot I don't of respect wanna, for other people. And that's, that's I don't want to create that. You know, when somebody else is uncomfortable and I sense that, I'm an empath. So I can't handle that. I can't handle that myself. So I will leave that situation um, always. But and that's why um, another reason that people get down on me because of the late transition. And there's a few people who absolutely despise this. Um, people who transition late like me that have kids. Um, no, I didn't transition. Like I, I was always like this, but, and my family knew I just didn't change my lifestyle with it until my daughter was of age and she was old enough to, you know, get a job and she was on her own. So people say that 
late transitioners like me abandon their kids. Now, that's a big fight with a lot of the younger trans people that don't like me because I'm older and um, we get in fights about that a lot. It's like, I didn't abandon my, my child, you know, I was there with her until, you know, I still am, we still talk. So, um, you know, she was, I think, 16 or something like that. But yeah, I it wasn't like she was a three-year-old and I just right, and said, right. you know, because we have trans widows and there's a big group. There's a wildfire on Twitter. She she supports me. She's a trans widow and she absolutely despises everything to do with the trans identity. But we can have an honest conversation. Um, she does videos constantly about how a late transitioner who was married to a woman is literally destroying a family and you know that's it looks bad um on me i think people, you know? I think people but, have a right to, to to live their lives but it, you can't expect somebody else to be with them for that like for example if 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 a woman got married to a man who transitioned um you know i read i don't know if this is true or not these these reddit stories but somebody somebody posted something like i transitioned i'm trying to convince my wife she's now a lesbian and the wife's like no and, and and so that kind of that kind of nonsense is like that that puts a, a damper on things. And if if the, if the couple can survive it, great. But 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 you understand you're you, you know you're in a relationship, and if that person is fundamentally changed. It could affect the dynamic of the relationship, and maybe it's best to go separate ways, right? Yeah. Um, and by the way, if you remember, I reached out because of your the jubilee thing. Um, right. People may remember this. Um, and by the way, somebody had asked, and we'll take a few quick questions and we're going to uh, wrap it up in about 12 minutes. Cause, uh, yeah, we got off topic. topic. My bad. <laughs> no, I love that. No, that's what we do here, but my, my gut is starting to, to affect me. Um, oh no. Uh, well, I'm happy people are listening. Hi. <laughs> so somebody asked me what the, uh, somebody had asked in the live chat, what this channel means. I'm centrist. I don't lean left or right. I've been accused of being left, right, far, right, far left. I've been accused of all of the spectrum yet. I'm about the centrist you can get. I am middle ground person. Um, and you were on the Jubilee middle ground. Uh, episode with with Blair White and I listened to what you had to say and I thought that you were not given adequate time. I was like, this is the person, this is the voice of reason. This is the who I want to hear from, as a, as yeah. a voice of of, of 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 hey, how do we how do we fix these things? Instead of bitching and complaining, how do we fix these things? Yeah, and yet, I, I, nobody on the panel was willing to talk about how do we how do they resolve anything. It, it's all persecution porn with them. Yeah, it was just um, a popularity contest. And I yeah. was I just I just had this conversation on Twitter not two days ago with somebody saying again that you didn't talk enough, Jessica. And I was like, well, I, I was raised not to speak over people. And I, I, I don't interrupt someone when they're talking. You know, I mean, we do was this on our awesome? podcast, but that happens. But that yeah, whole yeah. shouting, it was a shouting match. It was a popularity was contest. Awesome. And it was Blossom shouting at everybody about black rights and trans so rights. And, You're so annoying. You know, take there's. I, one thing I, I said on that, and uh, there was one time when I was sitting right next to her, and I, the camera picked it up. It made the the final cut, but nobody could hear it. I could hear it because I know I said it at that time. But she's yelling at Blair about something, and I turned to her and I said, "Why does it always have to be about black? Why do you have?" Or no, I said, "Why do you have to put black in front of it? Because it's about." And she snaps back, and I was like, "Okay, but we're here talking about trans issues, we're not racial nothing issues. Race her, exactly. Nothing. Nobody. Nobody. Nothing. I, I wanted to say this to her so bad. Nobody on this panel." cares that you are african-american nobody know nobody cared we were we are all our own minority already we are uh, you know dealing with enough crap of our own let alone to worry about the race of someone you know so but yeah right next question sorry i, I, I don't i don't, I, don't well. yeah. I think you're more on the right to be honest with you but you know that's um yeah, I, I tend know, not so to get along with liberals so I, I, lead, <laughs> and I, I, I you I, and me are great friends right. so Oh yeah, and and like I said, I adore that. Um, I I do probably lean more right on certain things, but I gotta tell you, I can't stand any conservative in, in, in politics. I don't think I, I'm not a I I can't stand Trump. I know you support Trump, and we would never agree on that. That's fine. Um, but I don't like Biden either, right? Um, well, I, I, I again, I I don't like politicians. I don't like career politicians. I don't I don't I don't like the right. I don't like the left. This is why I'm a centrist. Trump Trump's not a politician. He was a he's a businessman. <laughs> Well, he's a politician now. <laughs> I, I, for the record, I am only supporting Trump because he fixed the country um, four years ago. And I was working in the retail at that time. I never made more commission in the 23 years I worked in the retail industry, the same industry for 23 years. My last four years that I worked in that industry, I made the most money ever because people had disposable income. And that directly affected my pocketbook. Now they don't. Checkbook. Yeah, now they don't. And no, it's nobody has now. disposable income. Yeah. I still work in the but hospitality that, industry. But, here, but here, but you do you attribute that to the president or Congress? I, whatever, but it, whoever's president, like that administration, is running the country. I don't care what the stupid. I don't. I'm not pol politically 
active. So I don't, I understand how the house has to pass this and it has to pass this and it's, you know, a mix of two. So I get that's how laws are passed. But in my opinion, I only am playing the dumb, the useful idiot. When I look and see the over, I just look for the end result. What happened? This is president. This administration is running the country. This is what happened. This was, you know, it was good when Trump was here and it's bad now. So I think, I think it's bad all over, but that's yeah, again, different experience. To be, to be right? honest, I would rather have Vivek Ramaswamy in there than Trump just because it would end a lot of um, the whole Trump I'd rather have syndrome. Like, I'd rather have something like Gatsad or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't even know who that you is, know, but yeah. Uh, Gatsad, oh, he's a, he's a um, Israeli uh, <clears throat> pundit on Twitter. Very brilliant. Who's, he wrote a book called The Mind Virus. Or something like that who's is it portugal or who's the 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 new president that just turned the whole country around portugal or oh I, oh uh, no there's one in ecuador that changed everything around the ecuador guy like he yeah like yeah. the country yeah, yeah no more anything and the, yeah well he yeah because the, he people cracked down like all the crimes but he crime rates down, down. Yeah. transgender identities down it's freaking awesome but he also took so. away yeah but he also took away personal freedoms he cracked down a lot of the gang stuff but i mean at what cost and it's a trade-off i mean this is yeah. what i've always said you cannot you cannot have a society that's 100 percent free and 100 percent secure one is a trade-off of the other yeah i agree it's, i mean I've said in a video, I would, I would glad if it means protecting women, I would gladly give up my rights to purchase my medications. Um, I probably would still present this way in public. I don't have a choice. I've had too much surgery. Um, but I, I don't need to be trans if it means women need their own space. Like I, I would sacrifice that, you know, easily enough. So you know, it's so funny just, that I, I, I actually get flack for for. For, for, I, you know, I'm, I've never identified a feminist. Like you said, it's just weird for me for a guy to say he's a feminist, right? And I've always supported first and second wave feminism, but this third and fourth, oh my God, the, just it went, you know, for, so far south. But I've always, <laughs> always been 100% for, for women equality, uh, women's rights, what they have now. I mean, it's it, the, 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 the gaps are so insignificant anymore. Yeah. Um, women, women are out there empowered to do everything. As women CEOs, as women, you know, they, they've broken that glass ceiling yeah. that shattered ages ago. And yet yeah. I'm, I'm being labeled because... I think women's rights are being trampled upon in sports. It's it's bizarre to me. You know, somebody who's always been an ally, I'm getting flack for saying women, biological women shouldn't have to compete with, you know, biological males in sports because there's an unfair advantage of there. And I'm evil for saying that. And yet you are evil. <laughs> I, I don't. I, yeah, it's bizarre. You know what? If they want to label me evil for that, I'm OK with that. I love I, it. I, 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 I'll take it all day. I'll take that um, evil label all day. If it yeah, protects I, women and children, and children, sign me up. Exactly. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna run with that. If I, if, if I'm evil for protecting women and children, then so be it. I, I, I have nothing to lose, you know, because mm -hmm. the people that are promoting these, these types of radical policies, they don't seem to give a damn about anybody but themselves. They don't care about tra actual trans people like yourself. They don't care about women. They don't care about children. They're promoting a policy for whatever their reasons. And I do think there's a money to be made there, especially with the medical profession. Oh my God, they're making bank off of these procedures. Mm -hmm. But was there uh, another question yeah. in your, in your, um, other I, than I are you right or left? <laughs> um no i don't think so oh, okay um, i said you had a couple but yeah I so I, to 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 touch on what we were supposed to talk about the plan of yeah, thing, like, yeah I, go ahead will they go out of business i don't know if i was running the company no. i would just i would invoke um not invoke but i would make every plan of fitness have a gender neutral and a men and a women's and i would enforce it and unfortunately right now there's not enough laws on the books to to to, to other than to just say, we, you guys have to act on your own good faith, your own, you know, morals and do, say, okay. Do, do, do you think it's because of the people running the company? Probably. I, I hate to think that it's like the NCAA or like the college problem that we're up against with, with the trans inclusion thing. It's being allowed in college because the government, the current administration has come out and said, if you do not allow trans athletes to compete with the women we will withhold your funding that you get every year so are these companies you know traded and is it something that the government has their finger in the pie with on on these public companies that dictates that they be diverse equity inclusive like i don't i don't know enough behind the scenes to say that the government is kind of like being the puppeteer um with you know companies like disney and well disney i mean obviously disney's cup government control too oh yeah disney is cool. Cool is planet fitness part of that group like are they in on some of that government money that that the government says look what i got but you gotta be inclusive you know so is is that what's going on behind the scenes i don't know 
I don't know, but something's wrong with Disney. Um, their, their latest <laughs> was there, what's, their, what's their latest trailer with the was it Acolyte or something? Is that was called. Oof. I quit with Disney. Um, like that's another product that I don't use. Doritos, Nike, Bud Light, Disney, and Hershey's. Like, <laughs> and now Planet Fitness. Yeah. Which I, I don't do the gym thing anyway. Like I'm self trained, you know. So I, and I'm so I'm so tired of people not understanding the word woke has multiple different usages. And the, the term woke way before Tom, Thomas Arrow. Um, it was you know, and, and, and all that made, made nothing to do with now what it means as a majority. It doesn't. Yeah, I never did. Yeah. You know, and somebody asked me that on on uh, Instagram the other day. What's woke mean? And I'm like, well, it it, it came from you know the, the black American uh, yeah. telling his fellow African American stay woke against the white oppression. Right. That was where that's and really that where it came reason from. Reason for that? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was it, it it back in the Martin Luther King days. You know, it was that's it what was, it was it for. Was Came up with their black people were woke. telling other black people, pay attention, don't fall asleep on right. Whitey. Whitey's going to take advantage right. of you. Yeah, they did. They were taking advantage of them. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Look, I am. I, 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 I believe it's far better than it ever was, but I still think there's some systemic, systemic racism out there. I, I don't care. Yeah. Uh, you know, these, but, like but, Charlie, like Charlie Kirk saying there's no racism, and, and I don't uh, agree with yeah, I don't saying there's that. there's yeah. tons of racism out there today. There like, I listen, to, I listen to Charlie Kirk and I listen to Candace Owens because I listen to both sides. I mean, I'm equal. Oh, did you hear she 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 got fired? I know from, from that crazy? Daily Daily, yeah. Uh, Daily Wire. Yeah, the debate is: Will she team up with Tucker or not? Or was she? I know she's you know going to do her own thing, but does she want to team up with Tucker? Let's talk about the next time because I've been following that. Um, sure. Like I said, I, I follow a lot. I, I don't talk about a lot, but I do follow a lot of these uh, people. Mm -hmm. um, I think Candace Owens' position on a lot of things is wrong, um, but on a, on a few things she is is right. She's well, very well spoken. I give her that. She's, yeah. she's a formidable a person. Um, she is a turf. How... <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. she, she wants to eradicate oh, yeah. me with her and Michael Knowles oh, want right. to get rid of transgenderism oh, he is, together. He, well, he's worse. He's he's probably the way worse. Michael Knowles, um, Andrew Wilson. <laughs> yeah, they're they're way worse. And this is why people like put me in that category because I, you know, oh well, you subscribe, you know, you're you you follow them on Twitter. So what? I I follow a lot of people on Twitter. I don't agree. I with, do. Okay, I'm trans yeah, and I, mean, I follow both of them. <laughs> who you follow doesn't freaking matter, you know. And if they, I they, follow. They, I follow Michael but, Knowles and Matt Walsh on Instagram. <laughs> and you know, I, have, I, I have, yeah, I watched that movie and it, you know, what is a woman? But you know, again, just because you follow somebody doesn't mean that you're a pundit of them. Um, Jessica, thank you for coming on. It was a pleasure. I appreciate the fact that you and Riley Gaines um, and many other people are standing up for what I believe is right and it has nothing to do with phobias, it has nothing to do with bigotry. It is there's right and there's wrong. Um, and mm -hmm. when people are violating the rights of other people in order to promote their own. Um, agendas because of their selfishness then i'm going to fight against that and you have exactly. been a voice of reason and i just applaud you for that i really honestly do so thank you i try I, so thank you jessica um, all right we'll I see you later and we'll bid you good night at the non sequitur show okay everybody thanks for watching i hope you guys enjoyed that it was it was kind of a long episode so i apologize for that but we covered a lot of topics and it kind of got a little bit off the rails but that's okay that's just genuine conversation and if you did stick around to the end i really appreciate that if you would like comment subscribe uh let me know that you're uh interested in what i have to say if you have any suggestions on anything you'd like me to comment on or anything you'd like me to do uh please let me know in the comments as well i do respond to all my comments because i'm not that popular <laughs> so i've got time trust me i promise you i'm gonna do a video um going over my gun collection things that I have acquired over the years and what I find near and dear to my heart is my gun collection. So I want to go over that with you guys too. So I hope you guys all have a great weekend. Thanks.